So how do you uh, replicate that, Mary? How do you get that kind of enthusiasm going? I mean, it's one thing to say that this is sort of a laboratory and this is happening here in New Orleans. How do you get people around the country and around the world to, to see that this is, this is the way to do it? I, I think it goes without saying that that is a critical element. If people don't care about their place, they don't have a sense of place. It's not special to them. There is a, it's hard to, I don't know how else to incentivize that feeling, but just to tag on what he said, it is part of this culture, and I'm sure most cities are, that have any history whatsoever have that, that continued, uh, continuing neighborly, neighbor helping neighbor, which is the, the essence of service, for instance, all the chefs help each other, all the musicians help each other, all the sports people help each other, and then they, they whatever talents uh, they bring to bear on the larger community. Right now, one of our uh, chefs had uh, recently been shot, and, and all the chefs banded together. He didn't have health insurance, and we're all, they reached out to everybody who goes to all of their restaurants, and we're doing endless fundraisers, and we're gonna take care of, of this chef, that's one example. I could give you one every single week of something like that that happens that the citizens have now sort of habitually, just we can do this, it's very empowering. That's probably the other, I think people think, and maybe Mitch mentioned this this morning, that it's, there's something um, inaccessible about getting something, getting, making a change or, or making an impact, but I guess necessity being the mother of invention, all these people who had, came together to pick up the garbage, otherwise it was, it was going to be catastrophic and disease-ridden, they, they grew and they got more confident and they developed all kinds of service uh, projects. So I don't know that the, um, I think each city is different, each community is different, and to take what we've, what you've been sharing here, what you've learned, what works, and then tailoring it for your own communities is, really the only way to do it. Let's just do St. Bernard's uh, project for a minute. She, her, the, the people that started, the boyfriend and the girlfriend, they went to just help St. Bernard Parish. This was, this St. Bernard's was just as devastated by Katrina and Rita and everything else, but didn't make the TV. Um, and they built one house and they, they were so stunned that they could do it. There's now, this is now the St. Bernard Project. They have hundreds of houses. They have vets building houses. They've expanded. It's, it's amazing how you can expand to fill a need. And I think we just tell each community, how did you do it? How did you start? And just dig in and do it. I don't think there's any real rules. What about government, though? So does that take government off the hook? No, we, we, I mean, look, I, I, I'm obviously, uh, no bigger fan of, of our mayor and the, our, also our first lady, terrific uh, human being. And I think that you, you, we have a, and, and you can feel the difference. I think that that, that, that that government leadership is very important. I mean, it, it, it can foster things, but it, it, you know, by and large, and the mayor always says this, is we're, we're gonna help ourselves. You know, we're gonna do this. And, it, and this battle is being fought, and you're here and you know this, this battle is being fought on the street. It's being fought block by block. It's being fought with blight. It's being fought to give some of these kids, a, you know, in this hopeless cycle of sometimes that urban kids get trapped in, and people, you know, our school system is the most improved urban school system in the country. I mean, we've made some real, real progress down here. Our, our flood protection is the best that it's been maybe ever. Uh, I hope we don't have to test it out this hurricane season, but you know, we live in a part of the world where this, this may happen. I'm, I'm very confident that, that we've made the necessary improvements we do here. But it, yes, it, and, and all, all of it matters. Not one, per, not one sector can do it without the other. You gotta have a, a, a very strong civic endeavor. You gotta have a strong, you gotta have a, a visionary for, for a mayor and you gotta have kind of polit political leadership. But if you guys say this is going this is block by block, house by house kind of battle that we wage in here. And for the most part, we haven't won, but we're, we're, we're going forward more than we're going backwards in a lot of areas. We still got a long way to go. You know, it's, that's a good question because um, it's not an either or. James is exactly right. Mitch, uh, Mayor Landrieu, relies on these community efforts, uh, a, a, a recent example of that you mentioned faith-based after the BP disaster 
he, the, the convening part of all the faith-based Catholic charities, all the different denominations, all came together to provide food and clothes and whatever the, these people who were and still are uh, jobless down there. Or the city council and the mayor's office rely on neighborhood associations. And whenever there's something to be done, the, it's, a, it's in concert, it's a partnership. It couldn't work one without the other, I don't think. Yeah. It, it, it's also, I'm, it, this is a city of neighborhoods, and people identify, I'm from, this, I'm from the seventh ward, or I'm from the 13th ward, or I'm from the ninth ward, or I'm from, you know, Lakeview, or I'm from Central City, or whatever it is. There's very much, a, 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 a city of neighborhoods and people identified that. My, my grandmother grew up in with, with the old city of Carrollton, which is like, you know, that people know immediately what, what, what that means. Uh, so it, it, those kinds of things, for me, which, which, the other thing about this place is, again, it's our own culture, but you know, people come down here and they really like it because it's different. And if we ever try to be anything other than New Orleans, people say we need to be more like Houston. No. Carry your ass to Houston if you want to be more like Houston. We don't need to be more like Houston. We need to be more. Let's more see how are. many cities James you know, can insult in half how many, I was just going to say, how many states can you insult, James, in uh, 25 minutes? Let's just see. Now, I, I love, I mean, Houston, what they did, that was one of the most remarkable acts of human kindness, what Houston did in, 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 in the fall of 2005, was remarkable. Right. Remarkable, absolutely remarkable, and, 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 and no, no doubt about that, but I'm just saying is we, we need to rebuild, and we're doing that, and the, the great thing about it is, is that I feel like that I grew up in this culture, my children grew up in this culture, and their children will grow up in this culture. It's very important that they have the option to do what Mary and I did late in life, is to move back here, that it's, it's there, if you want to live there. If you want to go off and do something else, that's fine too. But you always know that you have this culture, this to go back to, that is so, was so important to your family and generations that came before you. How, how have the kids adjusted, Mary? My tag team of teen terror. <laughs> they're 13 and 16. Um, they're great. And, and in a, I was, as I'm listening to both of you, you know, this, this service, we now have a service, you have to have a service uh, commitment to graduate from most of the schools here. Scott Cowan started that Tulane. All of our kids have service projects that they have to do. And really, they go into it thinking, it's like a homework assignment. Right, but it is, as you all know, who, who do this, it's a gift. It is a gift. There is... Uh, no greater gift than giving of yourself and your time. And there, it's such a character builder and value builder for, for them to be participating in these, and there's endless opportunities for service here. I'll, and I'll, something else I've noticed, every conference that comes here, be it Zurich or the NFL or whoever we talk to, we, they have built into their agenda a service project, and it is always the highlight of their trip. They plant trees or they build a house or something. It's, what are you laughing at? Nothing. I'm, <laughs> I'm happy. agreeing with you, I I'm think. Like I'm happy. agreeing. <laughs> Mr. Happy Pants. Yeah, I don't yeah. usually see you smiling while I'm talking, yeah, yeah. so it's thrown me off. <laughs> <laughs> this is so much fun. What's this, what about the celebrity factor? I mean, we've all seen Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt here and Sean Penn was here. How much does that contribute to uh, you know, making this something that's cool and something that people really actually want to invest in? Well, the very, first of all, I mean, let me say, Brad Pitt, he's got real skin in the game here. Sandra Bullock, real, I mean, Sandra Bullock, uh, at Morn Eastern High School, it's the oldest high school in the state. I mean, she's almost, literally almost adopted. What, what Brad has done and make it right is unbelievable. You go down to Lower Ninth and you see these homes that they've built. And I've been doing like tours. People come and I take them around. I can see the real progress. And that's an important, again, all of it is important. Not, you know, what the churches do is important. What the celebrities do is important. What the, the, the volunteer people do is important. What the mayor does is important. What businesses do is important. I mean, it's all part of a larger thing. But 
I, I would say what, what Brad and Sandra have done here are, are really, in many ways, remarkable, really remarkable. It sort of put you on the map with the service part of this, this whole Absolutely. rebuilding of New Orleans. You know, and can I say about them in particular, and, and a lot of celebrities that you don't even know are here, they don't, they're like you, they don't do it to get recognition. I mean, we know the Brad Pitt project is amazing what he's done and, and learned and invented relative to flood control. Those aren't just rebuilt houses. Those are energy efficient houses that are creating energy and selling it back to the city. There's also all sorts of flood protection pervious cement, and all, I'm not going into it, but he's really made a huge contribution to flood protection, architecture, efficiency, energy efficiency, and all that. But Sandra does her, they don't want recognition for this work. So I don't know if other people think it's cool, but when they come here, they put on their, they put on their overalls and they work. And yeah. it's, it's a really, it's a gift for them too. We, in fact, and no one really treats them like celebrities. She sat next to us at, Mother's Day, and James kept going, oh, she's so pretty. Who is that woman again? Like, you know who that is. They gave her my table. I said, who in the hell sat in that table? I said, Sandra Bullock. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the, 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 I think during the Civil Rights Movement, they used to have an a, a expression, you know, some talk to talk and others walk to walk. Well, I would say that, that Brad Pitt and his family and, and Sandra Bullock, they've, they've walked, walked to walk. walk. And there are a lot of other people that have walked to walk that, that, that I know that have given up. Ask me who should they give money to or what should they do that, that are really not, don't want, or doing it just because they do, not just for the recognition, but that, 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 is, that is for a fact.